My shoulder blade wings a bit. Is this a problem? So shoulder blade or scapular winging is where basically there's kind of like a lift off of the shoulder blade and you can get your fingers kind of under it uh, so it's not like stuck down if you like onto the uh, onto the rib cage and this is something that I've had uh, all my life I used to be a competitive swimmer whether that's why and the muscles that work around the shoulder have created that in me or whether or not I'd be that way anyway is hard to know but certainly I have that issue uh, if you want to call it an issue um, but is it an issue? This is what's interesting. We were taught at uni that scapular winging was bad. It was a sign of muscle imbalance. It was a sign of like the pet minor being tight or short. It was a sign of uh, weakness in serratus anterior or subscapularis and therefore trying to get these muscles functioning better uh, was important in these people because therefore this scapular winging was going to cause abnormal movement in the shoulder and that was going to cause potential injury and problems in their shoulder. But is this actually true? Is scapular winging really the problem that we've made it out to be based on theory if you like? So here they looked at a study looking at whether scapular dyskinesis, which is the abnormal movement and positioning of the shoulder blade, which includes winging, if that actually causes shoulder injury. So this was a systematic view and meta-analysis of seven cohort studies, and they had over a thousand subjects in this, so a lot of people. So the first thing is, how many people actually had scapular dyskinesis? Now across all the studies, it ranged from 22% up to 56% of people actually had scapular dyskinesis, which is reasonably high especially on that higher end number there and was there a relationship between them people and shoulder pain and shoulder injury so out of all the seven studies they found one had a strong relationship but the others didn't so one in seven is not really the consensus opinion that was found here so overall they found 212 injuries in 923 participants 54% had normal scapular movement, but 21% of these people actually had shoulder injury. Now 46% actually had scapular dyskinesis and 25% had shoulder injury. So the difference therefore is 21% to 25%, so a few percent difference, which is very small, um, and therefore you could say there is a small difference in risk. So maybe scapular dyskinesis has a slight increase in risk but it's super slight and maybe it's just not actually that significant in the slightest now the trouble is with this they're looking at the, the relationship between the scapular dyskinesis and injury the injuries are caused by multiple reasons there's never one reason and certainly in this case there's never going to be oh if it's scapular dyskinesis it's got to be just that so it doesn't obviously account necessarily for all the other variables that go into causing injury. Um, they're not looking at genetics, for example. They're not necessarily looking at variables that aren't looked at in this association. So we have to be a little bit careful to draw too much conclusion from this. It could certainly be that there's a relationship in there when it's in the mix, but it certainly from this doesn't look like it's significantly big. Um, but again, I think you've got to use your individual uh, clinical reasoning. If you were to have a big scapular dyskinesis and there's not many other factors that are at play, it might be worth training that and see if actually it makes a difference. Obviously, if it's not making a difference, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. But certainly it's not a bad thing to train it and uh, certainly not necessarily going to cause them any adverse harm. So you could say, well, you know, if you've not got too many exercises with the patient, you could bring in some scapular uh, control work. You could try and train some of the muscles that are weak. So serratus anterior, you know, trying to improve, therefore, how that scapula is moving. And they're obviously seeing if that works in that individual. And uh, certainly the evidence is uh, you know, not conclusive on this by, by any stretch. Um, and certainly if you look at this in the you know, black and white in environment of the study, it looks like it doesn't really make a lot of difference at all. Um, so it's up to your own interpretation as a lot of these things tend to be. So anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.